Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined in Belfast, like Northern Ireland, with Dee Walsh. Um, big day, big month coming up for you with Ega Balanga, but I hear you're going to be moving to a new gym in a few weeks' time. Exciting times for yourself. Oh, definitely. Uh, uh, hopefully, for the next few weeks anyway, because as you see, that um, Belfast is such a big town for boxing, and uh, there, there's been his historical professional Boston gyms in Belfast like Breen's gym, Eastwood's gym and, and obviously now my gym is going to be um, part of the history of boxing in Belfast anyway. You're obviously very much a full-time trainer now, this is what you do, you've got amateurs, you've got professionals in the gym. How are you adapting to life as a full-time trainer? It's been quite a while now but is it still very different from when you were a fighter? Well to be honest with you, I think a, a lot of lessons have been learned this last few years in terms of like balance and the time between the pros and the amateurs and even life itself and uh, and also who I want to work with as well. Um, the first few years is, was like a like a learning curve for me and um, but now I think I've gained a lot of experience these last few years with the with the fighters with the titans of one and the experience of gained from fighting in different countries and stuff like that. So um, no I've, uh, I've gained a lot of experience these last few years with, with it all, amateurs and pros. Do you have to be quite selective with who you bring on board and make sure they're the right fighters for you? And obviously you're the right match for them as well. Yeah, it's one thing I've actually uh, really learned. It's maybe this last year is uh, it's personalities who I want to work with. I know I know the type of person who I want to work with from now on. And uh, in the terms of style, uh, I can kind of, in my opinion, I can kind of adapt to, to all the styles because I'm, when I back when I box myself, there was times where I was through years I was just a brawler. There was times where I was like uh, a boxer. So. You learn how to adapt as a fighter. I think it's helped me as a coach. Talking about moving to a new environment, how much will that give you extra gears and extra motivation to turn up on these cold mornings? And the same for the fighters as well, when you've got a fresh environment, just give them that extra bit of edge. Yeah, big time. Uh, everybody loves something new, so um, no, I'm really looking forward to it because uh, we've been, the gym that I was in last year, it was called Gleam. It closed down um, for um, of n uh, numerous amount of reasons, but uh, so I've went from place to place from then. But uh, just really looking forward to getting in the own, the own space, and I'll probably give the fighters a new lease of life as well. She said. Let's talk about some of the fighters in the gym. We've got Conor Quinn here, who's a and professional. He's making waves. Yeah, I think he had seven fights last year, so he's he's progressing on that ladder very quickly. Talk to me about his progression and where you see him at the moment. As I said, uh, Connor, he, when he done the pods with me the other day, I think it's the sharpest he's ever been. And um, but no, it's uh, Connor. I talked a couple of years out when he was uh, when he came home from Australia. But uh, he set the ball rolling from last year, and uh, I think it's about time Connor and I get signed up by a big promoter because he's on the verge of now uh, big titles like British, Commonwealth, European. Um, I would I would fancy him against any of the fighters right now at that level, and then I would give it maybe a couple of years and. I genuinely thinking about world title fights for Connor because he's so good and uh, in the flyweight division. Um, in my opinion, it's uh, it, it's very very good at the minute. Um, but I think Connor will be ready in within the next year or so. What does need to be done to get him signed by a major promoter? He's obviously impressing in the ring. Is there just a few bits more to his armory that he can add to get that over the line? That's a good question. Um, but. For me, I would just leave that uh, the his manager to deal with. Um, I solely just work on his progression in terms of uh, and how he performs in the ring. So I just let Mark done that deal with that. Let's talk about Poddy McCrory as well because he's been in the game a long time, but he's got a big opportunity coming up in just a month's time against Edgar Belanga. Is this the biggest fight of his career, would you say? Oh, no doubt about it. It's actually the biggest fight. Um, Oh uh, yeah, his whole life. Like it's uh, biggest, biggest one for our camp, biggest one for for party. Um, even going away to a place like Orlando, Florida, it's out of our comfort zone. It's um, and even in terms of even money, like stuff like that. There, it's going to change party's life. And uh, but he's leaving those stone unturned anyway. Um, in terms of his preparation, because um, I think we've been training now for probably about five weeks all the guys so far, and it's what it's five weeks is it tough fighting it? Is it something like that there? So. Um, but yeah, so we're, take, we're, we're, we're grabbing it by the, the, bull, the bull by the horns, as you say, like, and we're going to give everything we have here.
a lot have been made about Edgar Belanga's progression. Some people saying a little bit slow, maybe doesn't impress as much as you would hope from a, a top prospect and a top fighter over in the States. What have you made of, of how he fights in the last 18 months, two years? Well, I've watched all his fights, well, all the fights he could get my hands on anyway. Um, I think I, I do think Berlanga is a, a very, very good fighter. Um, not just powerful in terms of his punch power, but I think the way he stalks people down and cuts people off and stuff like that, I think he's actually he's pretty good. He, he holds the centre ring pretty well and he, uh, he gets his job going, but our plan is to, to use his strengths against himself. And uh, so, obviously I don't want to give away too much of a game plan, but... I think Potty is good enough to, to pull it off um, because the way I do things is, uh, say, for the last five weeks, um, Potty, me and Potty have just been going over the same thing over and over again in terms of a game plan. And at times it gets monotonous and repetitive, but it's something that he's going to do instinctively um, in the ring because his muscle memory is just going to, even if he doesn't have to think about it, he's just going to just going to do it. So um, I think he's, I definitely think Potty's good enough to beat him. What sort of doors could it open for Poddy McCrory? We, we mentioned he's probably to nearer the end of his career than he is to the start of his career, but a win over someone like Belanga, that really elevates you to possible world titles, doesn't it? Yeah, big time. Um, Addy Horn says if he wins this fight, it's like uh, winning the Euro Millions, he says, was it? So he said it's like winning the Euro Millions if Potty was to win this fight. Yeah. So it would be an absolute dream come true if Potty was to beat him. Uh, the fight Canelo afterwards um, because you've seen Canelo's fought people like John Ritter and Rocky Feeling and people who um, in my opinion uh, are not elite level fighters but at the same time Canelo's given them a chance to fight so if Potty was the, the win this fight God, God knows um, it'd be a dream come true to come up against one of the pound for pound kings at the minute and uh, but yeah we love that it's an interesting thought because I think lots of people are looking at Edgar Belanga as the, the next man in line or one of the next men in line definitely for Canelo. Maybe Harman Munger in there as well. But he could very much upset that by winning in just a few weeks' time. And you really believe that a fight against Canelo is achievable? Well, no doubt about it. Um, see, if, if you had a same party where, where he's came from in terms of been four years ago until where he's came to now, and obviously you're saying there that uh, he's coming, he's more to end his career than he is the start of his career. But at the same time, um, nobody would have believed Potty would have got the estates. And uh, people are probably laughing to think that he would ever get a chance to fight against someone like Canelo. But he was laughed at before and he's got here, so why not, why not push on and gamble and go for it all? Do you see any vulnerability in Canelo? Because he's, he's certainly, people would say, on a very slight, Downward, downward turn at the moment, would you say? That's it. You say, sorry, vulnerabilities in Canelo? Yeah, do you see any of them? Well, it's very hard to judge because he's looked so good in his career. But one thing I will say is, is uh, it's hard to uh, compare a party to Bivol. But one thing that Bivol beat him with was his says. Um, Canelo is a, a late middleweight. And Potty is super, like he's a full blown, full blown super middleweight. Um, and a very big super middleweight at that. So, Maybe Potty would have an advantage, and Potty can obviously punch too. So, as I say, people would, would laugh at what I'm saying, but as I say, four years ago, you would have laughed at Potty if you had to say that he would be uh, fighting Orlando here against uh, uh, Agar Belanga, and he may have a chance at Canal. So, as I say, um, I, 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 I never believe one of my fighters could, could lose to anybody in the ring. Um, if uh, his managers or opponents say to me, one of my fighters is fighting someone, I'm going to 100% believe every, every second away that we can do it. You're very much a part of this growing scene in Northern Ireland. We've got Matchroom over here this week putting another show on. It seems to be in a very good place at the moment, Northern Irish and Irish boxing. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, as I say, like, uh, I trained Lewis for a few years myself, for Lewis Crocker. Um, hopefully now that uh, he puts on a good performance this weekend and it has uh, Addy Hearn interested in coming back again because there is a lot of fighters, um, like for example John Boyd here, who's uh, just, just about to make his pro debut. And um, it'd be great to, if Addy Hearn was keep coming back and fighters like who are just starting off the careers right now um, get an opportunity to, to fight in front of us, like say Addy Hearn, and fight on these, these great shows that Addy Hearn's putting on. Um, but in terms of the state that Irish boxing's in, um, 
as I say, like I think we've got a few fighters here who have potential of being world champions, and and Conor Quinn is one of them. No chance of you hopping across to uh, the, the city this week to speak to Eddie Hearn about Mr. Conor Quinn, or? Uh, well, if I got an opportunity, I would. I would absolutely bend his ear talking about Conor Quinn because of uh, how good he is. But but as I say, I just leave leave that job to the Martin on them as manager and the fair as managers. I don't want to um, st- stand on anybody's toes. You know what I mean? Final thing from you, we've talked a lot about Paddy McCrory, can you give me a final prediction for what it's going to be like against Edgar, Edgar Belanga? I genuinely think uh, Paddy's going to knock him out. I'm not going to say it in an arrogant way, I think it's going to be a, a tough fit. I think it's even going to be a tough fit for how long that it does last. But um, I, I think he can win in points, but I genuinely do think he, he can knock him out. Mm-hmm. Good man, cheers for your time, Dick. Thank you, man. Thank you.